Usually they have some kind of fruit trees. I, I don't see any type of fruit trees here. Usually they have shitty fruit trees, like a pear tree. Who would fucking want a pear tree? It's like eating sand. I'm at Home Depot with Bear. I need to get a couple things. He doesn't go back until Tuesday. We're meeting up for the for the lessons, you know, start lessons. And, every, you know, every chance I get, I'm going to take him in. I want him as good as he can be before he goes home. I have a star mark collar on him, which I didn't use to really train him. I just used a leather collar, but I think it might be helpful for his mom. So I want to get him used to that. I want to see if they have a cherry tree in here. I need a pollinator for my sour cherries. Need something. Weather really knocked it down this year, but a pollinator would really help my yield. My yield's terrible. Yeah, I like him on a star mark collar. Star mark collar, in case you're wondering, it's sort of like a pinch or prong collar, but it's plastic. It's way less pressure. You don't get the looks that you do with the pinch collar, which I have no problem with the with the prong collar. Use use the tool properly and it's no problem. Use any of the tools improperly. Yeah, it's a problem. So if you don't know what you're doing, if you're having problems with your dog, don't go buy a prong collar or pinch collar. That's not what it's about. It isn't. It's about training the dog. It's not, it's not about using a tool re with real high pressure. That is not the answer to your problem. An apple tree. Who wants a freaking apple? Apples are like eating dirt to me. I wouldn't, I wouldn't buy one of the, I wouldn't buy an apple tree if my life depended upon it. I have poison ivy. I do not want to buy a big thing of Roundup, but if they had like a small spray bottle full of Roundup, I would buy that. But I don't want a big one. I don't want to deal with it. I'm highly allergic to poison ivy, poison oak, all of those, poison sumac, real bad. I don't want to get close to it. I want to kill it and then drag it out later. Yeah, they got a small roundup for like six bucks. I think I'm gonna get it. I hate I hate using this shit. I really do not like it. Oh, Spectre side. Uh, it's four bucks. I'll get that. Some guy wearing a T-shirt that says "Family, Faith, and the Flag." If you have a service dog, or you're trying to train your dog to go in, st if you're trying to train your dog to go in stores, don't go in there shopping. You know, don't go into the store trying to train the dog and do your shopping too. That's like trying to train your dog to heal by taking your dog for a walk. It's just nonsense. It's nonsense. Train your dog to heal in the yard. It's yard work. That's what you need to do, yard work. Walmart has my shoes. They're the only shoes I wear now. It's the truth. They're the only shoes that feel comfortable for my leg and my feet. It's the truth. They're cheap. They're about 20 bucks. I just buy a new pair every every two months. Jinyan gives me shit. He says, why don't you buy a decent pair of shoes? Because decent pair of shoes cost a lot of money and they hurt my feet. So why would I do that? I'm not going to buy something just because it's more expensive. She's probably like Imelda Marcos. She pro I, I bet, Jinyan, I bet you got three or four hundred pairs of shoes. She could probably sh sell her shoe collection and buy my house. It's the truth. Chicks like shoes. And I also like you to be sensitive, so try and be sensitive or else they're not going to like you and take them places. That's something that I have a problem with. It's going places. I have shit to do. I don't want to go do that. No, I don't want to go to your parents' house. I don't want to meet your aunt and uncle. I don't want to do it. And I'm not going to. Yeah, I don't see anything like muck shoes. I mean, they have like rubber boots that I could like... God damn it. That's a, that's, that's a bummer when I realized what happened. What are you gonna do? Shit happens. Yeah, I don't see anything like that. I need galoshes. Sit. Uh, he's been doing great, by the way. He is written. Bear, you're doing awesome, brother. A lot calmer. A lot calmer. They have my shoes. I got them. You know what I really would like is something like muck shoes, which I had a pair. 
Last time I was coming up from Brooklyn, I'm exhausted, man. It's a long trip. I gotta pack the car up before I go, then I unpack it. You know, all the animals, I'm exhausted. So one of the bags got left by the car and the dude that picks up my trash picked up my muck shoes and about 10 pairs of jeans, socks. Oh man, it really hurts. It was, you know, they had something like that, which I, I, I don't think that they do. I'm starving. So I, I am having Taco Bell because I'm so hungry. I feel like I'm gonna faint. Two crunchy tacos, that's it. My diet is, I, I eat totally different. The only fast food that I will have, and that's on a rare occasion, would be Taco Bell, just what I ordered. Or I'll go to Wendy's and I'll have a chili. I don't really like to eat the chili there, but it's an option. I think it has a little bit of sugar in it. Um, you know, if I'm out and I gotta eat something, what am, what am I gonna do, go in Applebee's? I don't have time for that crap. It's great in Home Depot too. Assholes existed just while we were getting in the car. Ooh, look at the dog. Ooh, look at the asshole. A uh, couple of oohs like that um, in Home Depot. And there were uh, problems with children who have shitty parents that just let their children do anything. Like, oh, look, it's a dog. It's, it's an object for me to fuck around with. You know, it's like, it's like an object. It's not, it's not even a, a bean. It's like, they think they own it too. He did awesome though. He really did. He's leaving everybody alone because he knows I'm not into it. I'm at Wegmans with Bear. I want to get some Limburger cheese. I'm thinking a Limburger cheese grilled sandwich would be delicious. I'm not shitting, man. I bet it's going to be real good. Bear's doing great. Bear, sit. You're a good boy, dude. Very nice. Bear, down. No, down. Bear, sit. No, Bear, sit. Good boy. You did real good, dude. You're doing great. Now, for my grilled Limburger cheese sandwich, I want rye, but I want, like, sprouted rye, something like that. I'm not seeing it. That bums me out, but I, I definitely want to get some Limburger. I don't see anything like that. The cheese selection at Wegmans isn't a little bit better than Walmart. It's a lot better. Th this dog is fucking awesome. He's sleeping everybody alone and shit. He's doing great. Nah, I'm, you know, I'm just, I'm just so, so happy you're doing good. Bear's doing great. Bear, sit. You're a good boy, dude. Very nice. Bear, down. No, down. Bear, sit. No, Bear, sit. Good boy. You did, real did I just see you take two Limburgers? Yes. Are you a Limburger man? Uh, if that's what you want to call me. Yeah, okay, I'm the Limburger man. Shut up and get back to work, lady. I don't need commentary about the cheese I'm buying. That's the same idiot that when I'm looking at cheese, this is true, I, I've been buying my fucking cheese at Walmart she want to direct me to cheddar this was weeks ago like she's like oh we have cheddar over here we have cheddar over here shut up lady if i wanted cheddar i'd go to fucking walmart but who, who, yeah i'm a limburger man yeah no i'm the i'm the i'm the fucking cheese man lady i'm the limburger cheese man i'm going home and i'm gonna make a limburger cheese grilled cheese sandwich for my YouTube channel and it's gonna be fucking delicious because I'm the fucking Limburger man lady now shut up bear you did great dude bear sit he did awesome bear really he's he's done great in stores he's doing great he's going home to his mommy have you missed your mommy he says he has that's what he's telling me he says I miss my mommy are you the Limburger man what the fuck? Commentary about the cheese I'm buying. I, I remember my dad eating Limburger cheese as when I was a child, and I thought that it smelled disgusting. I did. I'm like, that, that shit smells like farts. I guess I like eating cheese that smells like farts. I don't know. I don't think it smells like that, though. 
it's not as smelly as I, you know, I mean, certainly I've had it as an adult. I used to buy it in Kansas City. I'll buy it in Brooklyn if I see it. You know, it's not that pungent. Liederkranz, I think, is a little bit more pungent. Liederkranz, like you put that on a cracker and then warm it up in a toaster oven. Yum. What the fuck? Only slept with one. And I'm still friends with her. I am. I like I like her. She's she's a comedian in New York City. She's real smart. What are you gonna do? She's not 19. She's in her 40s. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm professional to a point. That's just it. I am professional to a point. We didn't do it until the lessons were over. There you go. I'm a pro. I'm at Home Depot with Bear. I'm going to get some tomato steaks and some fertilizer and work berry. Actually, we're not getting heal. We're not getting tomato steaks. I need something. I, I cut down my uh, grapes that were in the front. They were about 13 years old. Delicious. I didn't want to get rid of them, so I just left like they got like real thick stalks. They're they're sprouting again. I'm getting new vine, so I want to uh, put something up front. I'm gonna see if they have some kind of pressure treated something. That I could just slam in the ground. I can upgrade later and then just uh, put some wire. I don't want the grapes climbing onto my porch, which that's what they did for 10 years or 12 years, whatever it was. But they're about 13 year old plants and I want to keep them because the grapes are delicious. Bear's doing good. We're looking for orchard spray. I have a um, peach tree that clearly has fun a fungal infection. I'm trying to save it. It, it has it had fruit like the first year it's gigantic but it's had this problem ever since I don't know if I can save it seriously I might end up cutting it down I was in the checkout lane and I dropped this out of my pocket I was getting my wallet out and stuff and I commanded bear to pick it up and he picked it up very difficult thing to pick up see how flat it is and it was on a hard surface if this was in the grass it'd be easier to pick up he picked it up. The damn dog will pick up anything I ask him to pick up. He's great. You're awesome, Barry. He is. He's a good boy. Bear's like a lot of dogs that they get into Frisbee. They get sort of obsessed with this. Like if you're walking around, they're looking at this. They're, they're not going anywhere. If you have this in your hand, it's like a power. Don't ever give up power. Don't let the dog chew on this and it's yours. You use it with the dog. The dog's never allowed to chew on any retrieving item. It doesn't matter if it's this, whatever. The only thing that I recommend a dog to chew on, and they shouldn't be doing this all the time either, the young dog maybe, but deer antlers, that's it. But this, as long as I had this in my hand, he'll follow me off of a cliff, pretty much. Bear, here. I moved the weave poles. They were back by the barn, and Bear's mom is coming, so I want to make it more difficult for him. Now, I am using the Frisbee as positive reinforcement. He needs to do it right, or else I'm not going to throw him the Frisbee. And here he goes, and when he goes through the last gate, I throw it. You could use the Frisbee. You could use anything for positive reinforcement. Bear, heel. No, heel. Come on, buddy. Heel. Sit. You don't have to train your dog with food. He likes Frisbee. It's positive reinforcement. So the point of positive reinforcement is when when he ends when he hits the last gate so i throw him the frisbee that he has to do it right if he doesn't do it right i'm not going to throw it wait
There is one that's working in there now. There's a couple that are cute. There's a few that are cute. More, more, more than, more than. I'm not gonna say. I'm not gonna give you a number. But there's one in there that I noticed the other day that was super hot. She's actually hot, but there's a but. She's way too young. She's probably 18 or 19. But that's true of. Well, some of them are older. Some of them have kids and stuff. This one was way too young. Jinyan would not approve. Jinyan would be like, you gotta be kidding. Every every woman that I know, that I'm friends with, would not approve. They would not like it. They wouldn't, they'd think I'm a pig. You know, like, oh, that that's your date? She She's, you know, young enough to be your daughter. Yeah, but the thing about it is she's not my daughter. And they wouldn't like that either. I, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying that I wouldn't date like a, a 20 year old. I'm not saying that I wouldn't. I'm just saying she'd have to go out of her way. She'd have to make it really, a, you know, like she'd have to be like, you know, I think you're old and hot, you know, I'm taking you home, old man. I'm going to, I'm going to treat you like you've never been treated before, old man. You're like, oh, okay, if you insist. But I wouldn't go out of my way. I'm not gonna go out of my way to like date, what, a 20 year old? Here. This is a game that I'm trying to teach Bear. And the game is this, that like when he's back on one of these placements, I will throw him a Frisbee. But I, I'm back casting him to the, the placement. So if he goes to, to the, the place target, then I'll throw, uh, and he does it right, I will throw him a frisbee. So then, see, I call him to me, and then I make him go into wall while was a standing position, and then I cast him back to one of the mats, and he did it right, so I'm throwing him a frisbee. He just started, we just started doing that today, and it, he's picking it up. This is a pretty smart dog. He's got Australian Shepherd in him, his poodle. See, so he did it right, so I'm going to throw him a frisbee. Somebody asked me if Bear was an Airedale. I, you know, I, I, I could sort of see how somebody might think that. An Airedale, I think it's the largest of the terriers, if I'm not mistaken. There's one, there's um, some Airedales that are really giant. I, I've, I've known a couple in, in Brooklyn, and they're really, really big. I mean, they're, they're 100 pound dogs and stuff. They're big, big dogs. I can't remember what they're called. I think they're, they're, uh, they were originally bred someplace in I, uh, Ohio. Some, I don't know. It doesn't matter. But anyway, uh, Bear's doing great here. So we're, 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 we're doing this game because we want, we want Bear to follow direction. And that's what everything with your dog should be about. It should be your, you know, you have these games where your dog follows direction. And when your dog does good, you can throw him the frisbee. You don't have to train your dog with food. Training your dog with food is just ridiculous. It conditions your dog to be excited. It makes you look like a resource for snacks. It is the wrong approach to, to take with your dog. I Every dog that comes here, I don't use any food. Puppies, it doesn't matter. Why are you why are you going to give your dog food when you can just use anything that the dog likes and food is tied into the dog's survival. It's too important to the dog. You just end up creating a mess. There's no reason to be doing that. No no reason at all. Now I'm just going over this a little very really quickly like I want to just go over like send him to that target but see how he's off the target so I make him go back and get on the target. Get on the target, Bear. Do it right. He ain't gonna... I'm not throwing a frisbee to him if he's not doing it right. So I'm calling him forward. I make him go into the woe position. He's walking a little bit, but that's all right. And then I'm casting him back to the target. He did it right. I'm gonna throw him a frisbee, I think. No, maybe I'm not. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because the act, what he's doing is positive reinforcement. He likes to work. Now I'm throwing him one. So remember that, that, that if you train the dog right, the command itself is positive reinforcement to the dog. They like to work. So now I'm going to switch to this 
that place target, so I, I cast him out there. He's not on the target. I'm gonna I'm pushing him back onto the target. He's gotta do it right. If you don't make sure that the dog is doing it the proper way, they just start doing it any way that they want. And very quickly they'll start douching out on you. You have to be very specific with your dog. I was telling Fair's owner we're doing lessons now, and I was telling her, like, you know, I know I sound nitpicky, but I'm telling you, this is the way to go. It isn't just sit. They have to sit proper. So if they're not, if they're sitting out to the side or whatever, or where, you know, they're just doing it their way. See, the dog is hardwired to be in charge. But they're living in a human world, so that you got to make sure that they understand that you're the one that's in control. So you have to be very specific with them. You train them to do commands. Now he's he's sitting down. I don't think I told him to sit. So watch what I do. I'm gonna slide my foot under here, make him get up. Get up, bear. Get it. Get it. Get it. Whoa. Now he he's he's he kind of got a little barn sour, but I got him right back. He went back right in the position that I want him. Now I'm casting him backwards, but he went to the wrong mat. If I raise my right arm, he's supposed to turn. Turn to the right. If I raise my left arm, it's supposed to turn to the left. Now, he did it right there. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. He's doing real good. Look at his body language. He looks like a doofus. He's having a good time. I'm, I'm flat out telling you. You're going to get a dog. Do not train it with food. If you've been giving treats to your dog, stop giving treats to your dog. That's bullshit. That's the guilty person that doesn't spend time with your dog so that, so you use fucking traits that is the wrong approach to take you should not do that that should not be the approach that you use you feed your dog twice a day right well then why are you giving it treats too why because you want to see it jumping around and its tail wagging because you think the dog loves you because you're you're giving it food that's ridiculous. Why don't you try training the dog instead of like bribing it to wag its tail? And the dog with the wagging tail, it, I'm sorry, this is going to hurt, but it doesn't love you, okay? It doesn't. And if it's a fast wag, it means it's excited. And all ex excitement is the point where all dogs make mistakes. Bark, lunge, bite, or don't listen. Look at Bear's tail. Do you see his tail? It's up and wagging, but it's not super fast. That's what you fucking want. You don't want a super fast wagging tail. You, it, it, there's been times that I'm taking him into Walmart. And he's got a fast wagging tail, and I'm telling him no. You better settle down, dude. You got to work. Don't think that your dog has capabilities that it doesn't. It doesn't. It, do, it doesn't have the capability to love you. I'll tell you that. It can like you a whole lot, but it is not a human being. So let's not. Let's not, you know, get into semantics here. Your dog is a dog. They don't have love. Love is a complex human emotion. Dogs respond. They don't sit there and ponder thought. You know, people that are in love, you think about your loved one. Your dog doesn't think about you when it's not around you. Bear is with his mother right now, okay? He's not missing me. He's with his mom. And when Bear was with me and his mom wasn't around, he wasn't sitting around pining. And I, I've worked with enough dogs over the years. I know I know the difference. Stop looking at your dog like it's a morph little human being. It You're doing a disfavor to your dog. Treat your dog as if it's a dog. That is, that's how you make a healthy, happy dog that's safe in the human world. We have 4 million dogs dying every year. Four million, and the major cause of it is improper training, no training. It stems from that. People get dogs and they think, oh, I don't have to train them, or it's improper, or they don't really understand. Oh, look, my dog will sit if I, if I have a treat in my hand. Stuff happens. St stuff really happens. Bear, your dog, everyone's dog is a subspecies of the wolf. And I guarantee you, if your dog starts function, your dog functions instinctually and with trained commands, okay? When they function instinctually, that's all the bad shit usually. 
You don't want your dog functioning like that. By the way, if you think your dog can make decisions as if like one human's good and one human's bad, you you you're the idiot. You shouldn't even own a dog. They're not psychic. They don't know. They don't. They can't tell if anybody's bad or good. That's not the way that it works. Kids get bit all the time. That has nothing to do with a, a bad person. So when you see that crap on the internet, no, it's 100% bullshit. It's a dog. They're all do I love them. I have to go do laundry, so I'm taking um, Bear to Catherine Craig. I got some weave poles in the car. I got a dummy launcher, some pheasant wings. I want him to do some stuff in some different places. I've already been moving him around doing this, but he's never been here. So it'll make it more difficult. Hey, bear with me and we're gonna do the weave poles here. The reason for this is that this is some place that he's never been. His mom's coming in town. That's gonna to be very exciting. So I'm, I'm taking him places that are totally exciting. This is a new place. It makes it more difficult. That way, when we do the first lesson, He's already been to the experience, you know, through the experience of a real exciting place or thing, not as exciting as mom, but it's going to make it easier to deal with bear. He just needs to do the weave pulls and that's it. If he doesn't do it right the first time, that's fine. I'm going to run him through it on leash and then he has. This is a new, new place he's never been to. I'm trying to cause excitement. I'm trying to make it more oh, difficult for bear by bringing him to a new place. Anything new makes it more oh, difficult yeah, for the dog. Here, I want it more difficult. I want to push this here. dog as much as possible because here. his mom's coming in town in a couple here. days. Here. You need to push your dog past here. these point, points of excitement. Here. So once here. the dog's functioning here. in commands, here. we start here. building the dog up Good job, buddy. to here. more exciting here. areas, newer areas. Here. We build on success. You here. cannot build on negativity here. with the dog. It, it has to be mostly positive. If you're not being mostly positive with your dog, you gotta change up and do something else. By the way, I've said it a million times, don't train your dog with food. He's compliant. He's off leash, he's compliant. We'll run him through it one more time. Bear heel. He's doing great. We got a little bit more time. I, you know, my, my stuff's in the washing machine right now or it's in the dryer, I don't know, but I got more time. So we're gonna we're gonna spend a few Weep. few moments here, here running them through Weep. the weave poles again because we're getting go. success. Job, buddy. Heel. Over here. Heel. Your dog here, no likes to just likes to know that it's doing a good job. You don't have to give it food. Look at Bear's tail. See how his tail's up? Right now I'm giving him the hurry hurry command because I'm wondering if he has to go to the bathroom. The potty but he doesn't. Hurry, but if you hurry. notice that your dog isn't functioning real good, maybe let them go to the bathroom and then try it again. But he's doing great. I'm at the wildlife management area. I'm going to put these objects out here. I'm going to make it easy for bear to find. I'm not going to make it real difficult. The wind's blowing this way. So I'll put them on this side of the road, just a little bit in. I want to make sure that he understands scent work can happen any place. He already understands this. We're here. I'm doing laundry. So, you know, might as well, might as well work the dog. He's going home soon. It's real windy. Remember, this is a good time for your dog to see because they see with their nose. So this is blowing the scent. We'll, we'll find this shit. This is similar to the park in that it's a new place. He's never been here. You want to push your dog. If you're having success with your dog, then you start pushing them. Don't overload the dog until you get it to a point where the dog is functioning pretty good. This guy is about, you know, 50 days on a board and train. So he's, he's doing great. He's functioning great. So I am, I'm, I'm taking him to different places. I'm pushing him. See, he just found a pheasant wing. He just found a pheasant wing. He's never been here. I did sort of use the road knowing that he would use the, the road sort of like a hallway and would sort of push him in the proper direction. So I'm using common sense. He's never been here. I'm not going to go 
throw something in tall grass. He's only been doing scent work for a week or something. But he, he's doing it. He's doing great. He got another object. He loves it. He loves it. You don't have to train your dog with food. The act of him going and finding something, you know, running around looking for, you know, a pheasant wing or whatever, that's positive reinforcement in itself. A retrieve is positive reinforcement. No, now we got one last object that's down here. He gets it though. It's right in there. I think I give him the old dead bird. He's got it now. There you go. Good boy. No, we got one more. We got one more wing I think he needs to get. And he gets that too. This is stuff you can teach your dog to do scent work. They love it. They absolutely love it. I'm telling you, like this, this dog just started doing scent work. This dog is, has an exceptional nose. I sort of want to try and get him to do a water retrieve, but there's a lot of green sludge down here. It's like algae. I just gave him a bath. I, I'm gonna try and see if he'll do it. If he doesn't do, it, I'll just, I'll just give him a bath. It's no big deal. Just algae. It's no big deal. Now this sort of went how I thought it would go, and not real well. But a lot of videos are for education. You know, I did get, I do get him to like, he can, he can get the object if it's right at the edge, but he's not going in the water and doing a water retrieve. He's being a real wuss. Um, there are those spills that are making some sound, which is causing excitement. It smells different. You have a couple choices to get your dog. Don't let your dog be fearful of water. Get your dog in the water. If it's warm out, put 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 a leash on the dog and walk the dog into the water. Now I'm trying I'm trying to like screw with the dog. Like I'm gonna throw it, I'm gonna throw it. I'm saying stuff to him causing excitement. See how he's bouncing around? Okay, so he got in the water, but it's purely out of just excitement. So he's in the water, but he's not functioning real well. And see, he gets a little bit deeper and he starts getting like, what the hell is this? So he's, he's, he's just confused. He's never done this. He didn't know what to think. And, and then he's like, fuck it, I'm going in it. Here, I was going to bring him down here with Tonka, but I didn't. The reason why I didn't bring Tonka is because Tonka was annoying me right before we were going to go. And sometimes I need a break from Tonka or one of the other dogs. And I, I like to spend individual time with each dog. And this is a client anyway. So we're not getting this accomplished. We're not getting him to do a water retrieve. But I know that I can get him to do a water retrieve. See how he dances around the edge? If your dog does that, put a leash on him and walk him in. Like I said, this is I do educational videos. I could have taken care of this right here. One, I didn't want to get wet. That's the truth. It's, it's sort of cold today. And... Um, I just, I just did, I just didn't want to get wet. That's the truth. But if, if you're having problems with your dog doing this, you put a leash on them, you tell them to heal and walk into the water. And when they hesitate at the edge of the water, you just bring them on in. See, he's just being ridiculous. That that's just ridiculous. He's poodle. Poodles were originally bred to be hunting dogs, water dogs. He's a waterfowl dog essentially. I mean. You know, it's a non-sporting group. I, I think it's in the non-sporting group. But, man, they, they, they do like water. All dogs swim. Bulldogs swim. That's a myth that bulldogs can't swim. They can swim. All dogs can swim. And another myth about dogs, they all have webbed feet. So the, every time I hear an idiot say that, like I'm with a lab or something, they go, oh, he has webbed feet. Yeah, they all have webbed feet. It's a dog. They have skin in between their toes. Now, but, you know, he has, they all have webbed feet, okay? Uh, uh, a lab, a Newfoundland, they swim better because they do. They have a, a big, big paw, and they will sort of spread out their paw when they're swimming. But Tonka doesn't have a big paw. He's a German short hair, and he can haul ass through water because he's, he's, swimming different he doesn't have all the fat that a labrador has tonka's just 
real lean and 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 muscular. He's he's not screwing around. He's just you know pulling himself through the water, where I can the big fat Labrador can just sort of like kick back, relax, and just swim and do it do it probably won't. Well, I don't know. Tonka's pretty. Tonka's got a lot of energy. He could probably swim all day. But those, those water dogs, those Newfoundlands, the Labs, they got web feet. Tonka's got web feet. Bear has web feet. My, my Chihuahua Mango has web feet. They all have web feet. My cat has web feet. It's a fact. So don't, don't think that like there's a certain breed that has web feet and others don't. See, that's bullshit. Just dancing around the edge. It's real annoying. It is. It's real annoying. Watch this. See, he finally gets it. Oh, you're real brave, Bear. Nice job. I do tell him he did a good job. I've got to go pick up my laundry. And then we have to get a couple things in Walmart. And he's wet, so we're going to walk down this road. Let him dry off a little bit. He's, he smells, he smells like a, like he's been swimming in a slough, which he has. He has a real nice heel. He's a very, very good dog. I like him a lot. I'm going to miss him. He's awesome. He does everything. He needs more work on water retrieves, but who cares? I mean, seriously, the dog's great. See, he's just, he's awesome. I'm gonna have to hose him off when I get home because I gave him a bath this morning, but then I was like, screw it. I was taking him to Catherine Creek, maybe try and get him to do a water retrieve. He, he picked up the object in the water, if that's what you want the first time. The next time, if I, if I had some more time, I could get him to, to go, go in the water easier. Now, <clears throat> the water that we were using too, it has that down spout thing coming. You know, if it's if it's like real dead water like this, it's easier for the dog to go in. There's a lot of noise and stuff, so it, it wouldn't be any problem. Bear, let's go heal. Comes right back to heal. I can never remember how the dog was when they came. All I know is, you know, it's all a blur. It is, it's all a blur. All I know is that the dogs that come here can't do really any of the shit that they're doing going back, so. And they all learn the same stuff, you know, in varying degrees. He can catch a Frisbee. Some dogs aren't really catching the Frisbee when they're going back, but that's because it might be like a Catone or uh, an English Cocker. They're not really known for catching Frisbees but they can retrieve it. And if the owner keeps working with them, they'll, they'll be able to catch it. But the catching part really isn't, that's, that's not what it's about. It's about getting the dog to do the retrieve and do it proper. You know, bring the ob go get the object and bring it back to me at heel. He's a service dog. That's it. And if he was a hunting dog, it'd be the same thing. Fair heel. It's the same thing. Bring me my, bring me my bird and deliver it to my hand at heel. Here. I was around hunting dogs as a kid. This always seems weird to me when I'd come across somebody we were hunting with where their dog was trained to drop the bird at their feet. I was like, that dog isn't very well trained. That's what I'd say to my dad and say, you're right. It's not, it shouldn't do that. It should hold it in its mouth and deliver it to your hand at heel. Not, I'm just gonna bring it over and drop it. That's fucked up. I'm not your slave, dog. It's the other way around. All of a sudden, since my channel's gone up and I've got some, you know, people are looking. I had some idiot trying to buy my channel for me. Are you fucking kidding me? I've worked this hard and then I'm going to give it up for like easy money. No, that's, that's not going to happen. I have, you know, 4,500 videos, 4,500 videos. I know what he was planning to do. It was quite clear that he wanted to edit them and then just keep them on YouTube, but just edit them because I, you know, editing, I had no idea what I was doing in the beginning. 
But I mean, to make an offer like that is just, why would I do that? Why, why would I do that? That's, that's my hard work. I'm not going to give it up. That's my shit. I don't want, if I want to edit something, I'll edit it, you know? But, oh, and so, so you get the rights to the, um, my Teespring account too. That was talked about. I was like, no. I was just like, this is a dude that like really would not go away. I said no, and then that was the last offer that he made. It was like, I'll, I'll buy the rights to your, T your YouTube and Teespring account. And I'm like, no fucking way. Not now. Too late, dude. We're at Walmart. Bear's soaking wet. Yeah, he's a service dog. What? Service dogs can't get wet? Probably be the last. Well, no, it won't. His mom's in town. We'll be going to uh, Walmart or someplace with his mom. I was gonna say it's the last time I'll take him to the store. It's probably not true. I gotta get a few things. Go to heel. Bear, sit. Heel. I need wire for my my grapes. I cut them back, and now I'm gonna use a. Uh, making a trellis. I wish they had aluminum. I think they only have galvanized. I can't think of anything else I could use. I could use rope, but rope isn't gonna last, but galvanized will end up. It doesn't matter. I cut them back every year. I'll just use galvanized wire. Loctite or Crazy Glue should sponsor me, but they won't. Nobody will. Red Bull wouldn't. How many, how many years did I drink wet Red Bull? Nothing. Not even a free Red Bull. No, it's not necessary. Bear just did better in Walmart than he's ever done. He he's, was awesome. He was so good. What a good boy. What a great dog. I went to my Teespring account and I noticed that one of my storefronts was missing. It's the entire cane collection. It's not, it's not there. And I texted, well, I didn't text them. I sent them an email or a message and then they didn't get back to me. But I think I know why they didn't get back to me. It's because it shouldn't be there. There's no reason people will just get lost in that rabbit hole. There's already storefronts. Once, the thing about Teespring is that, like once you get 100,000 subs, they will actually design stuff for you if you want. I don't want that. I don't want anybody designing something that I can do and do a whole lot better. I'm sure that I'm, I'm more creative, a better designer than third designers at Teespring. That's the way I see it. So I, I, I want my look. I don't want somebody else's look and slapping my name on it. I'll do my designing, but they just might very well um, like do an audit of, of um, Teespring accounts that are doing well. Mine's doing well, man. I, you know, people like my t-shirts and shit. Like I, you know, it's got a uniqueness to it that I have over 200 designs probably. I mean, I have I have everything. I have leggings that it's weird that the leggings aren't a big seller. I would think if I was a chick, I'm serious. Like I would think the women would want those. Man, no, my my designs for my leggings they look they look great. You know, my T-shirts. There's I have prints of flat work that I've done. I have I have so much on that. I do think that Teespring, if you have 100,000 and you're selling stuff, I think that they'll go and 
they probably made the change for me. Like, look at the look at the idiot. He's got you know hundreds of designs. This looks great. He's selling shit, but he has this. One of his storefronts is the entire Kane collection. That makes no sense. There's like so many designs. You know, you just want people to go to it. So I think I think that it was sort of like uh, re re removed, sort of, but you could still get to it. The entire Kane collection. If I click on my test button on Facebook so it's still it's still there it's just not if you visit it you're not gonna see that but the entire cane collection is in all my storefronts I have a Bigfoot and alien one I have a dog man one I have official dog training um, uh, I have accessories like like iPhone cases I have socks the leggings are sweet I, you know, I don't know. Some of that stuff, some of those designs go way back into the 80s. And then I just, you know, made multiples to make a print. Some of those are like a print of like, um, be like one image and then it's just, you know, print, 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 you know, multiple times, hundreds, if not thousands of times, even layered upon each other. Everything on my shit I did myself. I made it. That, that's that's all Peter Kane artwork. Anyway, thanks Teespring. Teespring's great. What a business model. I mean, seriously, I don't know who invented that, but I mean, like, for a guy like myself, I don't have to do a thing except, you know, design the shirt or whatever. I have so much, you know, stuff from years ago I mean I have an endless supply of t-shirts for sure but I mean I I, I, ju I just have so much that that model that business model is great I don't have to do a thing I, I make the t-shirt and then it's out there and then people can buy it I don't have to ship it I don't you know they cover all that stuff they cover advertisement they're boosting my stuff meaning they're um, they have like a network and then they'll, they'll show the stuff on their network, which could be YouTube. The exact same place that I had Bear yesterday. He wouldn't go in the water. I didn't want to get wet. I still don't want to get wet. If your dog's doing that, like dancing around the edge, you have a couple options. Is to put the leash on the dog and take the dog in the water. Or if you have a dog like mine, this dog's been with me since he was seven and a half weeks old. I know he'll go after a retrieving dummy in the water he's not going to leave it so if bear sees him going in the water good boy talk good boy Tonka. no oh, bear bear no but generally speaking i'd never let one dog go on a retrieve and the other dog like dance around like this that's a, that's a real bad thing if you're doing that with two dogs that's just going to create a problem. Don't do that. You, they could get in fights. They're going to be fighting over getting the, the, the dummy. But I'm doing it for a reason. I'm trying to see if it'll get Bear into the water. This was unsuccessful here. But it's no big deal. Because see, see how Bear's like, you know. But here, now we start getting success. I'm doing the same thing. I'm letting Bear just run around. And this, this really isn't a proper way to do anything. I'm just trying to get Bear to go on the water. And we, we do have success here. And see, Bear's, Bear's going in the water. He's going after it, but Tonka's too fast. Tonka's not castrated, too. So Tonka, of course, is going to get the retrieve. But see how Bear's, like, challenging him? Like, Bear, Tonka, Tonka's having trouble getting up because Bear's in his way. That's why we're going to switch into this. And I just told him to sit. And now they have to start sitting and waiting, but I, I released Bear. I didn't make him wait real long, but this is his first pretty much water retrieve, standing in water. There he did it. Big boy did it finally. It's it's no big deal now. Now he's going on a, a second retrieve. So now now he's starting to see that water really has nothing to worry about. It's not it's not a big deal. This is also calmer. There's there's no spills that are making that sound. So so this was much more effective. Now you can get a better idea of like, see they have to sit and wait. And then I, I just released Bear to go get the retrieve. And Tonka has to wait. That's called honoring. 
if you're working with two dogs, you must teach them this. And I'm releasing them with their name. It's the only way to do it. So I'll either say Tonka or Bear. If I say Tonka, Tonka can go. I didn't say Tonka, I said Bear. So Tonka has to wait. Look at Tonka. Tonka's like, why don't I get to go? Tonka gets to do plenty of shit. So the Tonka needs to work. He does. He needs to help me. If I have a dog here, he needs to pull his weight. Now I'm going to let Tonka go on a retrieve. And that making bear weight like that this is good for the dog this this is setting up good behaviors it's teaching the dog that everything's an implied state watch tonka spin his ass into heel he's a very dominant dog he's very dominant he's not aggressive he's as dominant he's a dominant male dog now tonka cheated he just took off after the dummy so you know he's like fuck this it's it, you know I'm your dog. I'm going to do whatever I want. Dogs are hardwired to just try and see what they can get away with. And Tonka is a persistent, dominant male. So later in the video, Tonka does try and take off again. But I'm ready. And I stop Tonka and make sure that he's compliant. It's okay if the dog screws up as long as they become compliant. Now let's see if this is... You see? He was taken off. So I tell him, get your ass back there and sit down. So now I'm going to release Bear because it's Bear's retrieve. Or maybe it was Tonka's, but Tonka screwed up. So if your dog wants to do something, don't let him do it. It's a huge mistake. Teach the dog that it needs to be compliant. This is a, this is the empire of the dog. This is a human world the dogs are living in. So you want your dog safe and happy. you got to make sure that they're going to be compliant. If you tell them to sit there, they need to wait until you release them. And in this case, I'm releasing Bear with his name. I'll say Bear. I don't even have to say hold at this point because the dog's into the retrieve. I just have to release him. He needs to go get it. That's it. If you have two dogs and, and, and you're just throwing tennis balls and shit to them and they're just like, you know, who gets the tennis ball first? That stinks. You should train your dog. Everybody should be training their dog. And if you don't have the time to do it, find somebody like me that can, like, you know, get your dog up to speed so you can start working with the dog. Four million people are getting bit. Four million dogs are dying every year. It's ridiculous. It's because of lack of training, improper training, or no training at all. It's, it's, it's not that difficult. It's not, well, actually, it, is, it, it seems to be real difficult for a lot of people because they look at the dog as a more little human being. Your dog's nothing like you. Both these dogs, if this water was 32 degrees, both these dogs could get in the water, come out and shake off and not get hypothermia. It's a fact. We could just walk for a half an hour and both would dry off and everybody would be fine. You, on the other hand, you get in the water if it's freezing, it's not going to go so well. So stop thinking that your dog is a morph little human being. It's not. It's not. It's, it's, it's a mammal, but it's, it's, not, it's not like you. Your dog is nothing like you, other than it's a mammal. Sure, we have some of the same DNA, but they're so, so different. So different. And... We're, we're like a cerebral animal. The, the dog is not. It's instinctual. Uh, when I first started on YouTube, that I, I would make videos. I've taken a lot of them off, which were very critical of people. You know, it's just being an asshole, you know. I admit it. Some of, them, some of the stuff I didn't take off, there's still, I'm sure there's still a few videos up on Victoria Stillwell. Um, Caesar Milan, you know those are those are na those are big names though. So I'm punching up, but um, I would sort of like punch sideways. Like there were these, uh, there's these dog trainers in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, food trainers, of course. You know, purely positive bullshit. <laughs> that won't work with like they have size limitations. They won't work with a dog that's like, you know, intact. They're a joke. They're a joke. They still are in business. They're horrible. So I'd make videos about them, but I, I would never, you know, there's no reason in doing that. 
I, I don't know. I, there's other people that are into it. I just, I don't even think that I was into it. I was just like, I sort of saw other people doing it on YouTube, and I'm like, well, that's what I should do. You know, I need to get my subscribers, my, my, my base of su subscribers up. I don't think that that works. I really don't. At least in my case, I just look like, um, like I'm mean. You know, like I'm being mean. There's, there's people that do it that can look funny, like a, like Leon Lush, like he can do it, and and it's funny. And in most cases, he's he's you know going after the the biggest douchebag that you can find. I um I, I do have sort of plans in in the future to go after a certain dog trainer, like that, you know, like that. I almost used the word expose, which is just sounds so stupid. It reminds me of this fuck part, you know. Um, but I mean, he's a he's a huge problem on YouTube. Zach George is what I'm talking about. He's a huge problem on YouTube. He's he's pushing two million subs, and he's telling people bullshit. It's all it's all about marketing. It's not even like it's. I don't, I don't know why he has two million subs. To tell you the truth, he's real hard to look at, um, it's, it's campy shtick, he just says the stupidest things that are just untrue about dogs, like the excited dog is the smartest dog, no dog is smart, well some are smarter, but it's a dog, they're all trainable is the point, two, that, that, that just sticks in my, out of my head like so much, it's just like, to place that importance on a dog like the worst thing like oh I want an excitable dog because they're the smartest where excitement is the point where all dogs make a mistake they bark much bite or just don't listen he's totally incompetent and you know that's that's my goal is to catch Zach George and why I'm, I'm catching up to him influencing as I go that's 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 what I want to do I want to influence people with, with proper proper way to interact with a dog and train a dog, not, not bullshit. You know, oh, it sounds great. Oh, you can train your dog being purely positive? Yeah, give, give it a shot. No, no, don't, actually, don't. Because you, you, you'll have a hard time finding somebody that can retrain the dog for you. It's the truth. You'll have to find somebody like me, and there's not a lot of us out, out there, because there, it's so easy to, like, dupe the public tell people what they want to hear and then you know so there's an army of food trainers out there they're not gonna like me some of them don't like me already I mean I was doing this like I said I, was, I just was like punching a cross um, there's, there's no reason to even um, to even you know take a jab at those people like they're still gonna be doing their stuff. I don't know. I want to keep it as positive as possible. But when it comes to Zach George, I don't think I'm gonna be real positive, Zach. I, you know, I don't know. I don't. I don't get it. I, I don't get it. And and the point the point of it is is this. He's influencing people. I think that they're children, which I think is even worse because the child doesn't have a dog but they're influenced at an early age about dog behavior incorrectly. It stinks. It stinks, Zach. It does. It just sucks, man. That, that positive reinforcement. You can, you can train a dog. That's operant conditioning. A subsection of operant conditioning. Operant conditioning is both about, it's about the positive and the negative and the alleviation of both. But purely positive food training was just a, you know, they, they took the, the positive portion of operant conditioning and that's what they claim is science-based. Well, it's not science-based because science, operant conditioning, is about both the positive and the negative and the alleviation of both. So, it's all a big, like, smoke screen to get people to buy into this shit. You know, positive reinforcement training didn't work too well for the 
seals at SeaWorld and the whales at SeaWorld and the orcas at SeaWorld. So why is it going to be positive for your dog? It's based upon cruelty. It is. That's it. They found out that the, the food trainers found out that, like, you know, training an orca, a large whale in a pool is dangerous, and they still wanted to make money, so they, they, sold, they sold this shit to the American public about 30 years ago, and it's become very popular. So it's, it's a fucking joke. It's, it's just so, you have such a shitty dog, you know? They'll bark incessantly. That's the food trainer's dogs. Like they, they want to have blue ribbons. Like they'll get like a, a border collie and teach it frisbee or to do the agility course. And it can do the agility course, but it'll do shit like just bark all the time. Or... <clears throat> this is Bear doing the dummy launcher. Now the dummy launcher I'm using duds. I got a box of duds. They're they're 22 shells. But they're they're bad. They're not working good, so it's not going that far. But it's okay. It's no big deal. It's about the dog being compliant, and he is. He's being compliant. So if you notice, I'll do the dummy launcher, and it's fired by a 22, so it's making a noise, and I fire. But see see how it's not going far. But see how he's staying until I release him. That's great. That's what we want. We want a compliant dog. It's okay if your dog screws up. It's fine. But as long as, long as they understand no, if, they're, if you're getting a refusal and the dog understands no and you repeat the command, the dog that's trained will come, become compliant. By the way, don't say the, the command word over and over. So don't say sit, sit, sit. And I know in some videos when you see me working with the dog, I mean, like it's a puppy or it's a new dog, I might repeat the command. But once the dog learns it, you don't repeat it. He's great. He's doing a great job. He's going out there finding it. He's waiting for the retrieves. Now here's Bear doing um, reverse nice. retrieves. What he's doing here, is he's go. recycling paper and plastic. And he, he, he loves doing this shit. You can teach a dog to do this. Yes, it takes patience. You're not going to you know, teach a dog to do this unless the dog can actually do a retrieve. The re reverse right retrieve is exactly how it sounds. Instead of going and getting an object, you're telling the dog Let's to take an object lazy. and take it. You know, Sorry. hold the object and go take it over there and oh, drop boy, it in know. there. So, yeah, there. sure, it's advanced oh, yeah. stuff, but all dogs can learn to do this. Every dog that comes here could learn to do this. With, with, with some exceptions, meaning, like, if the dog doesn't stay long enough or... If the no, dog is up, a puppy, no, like maybe if it's a puppy, on, we might not get to reverse around. retrieves, but definitely every puppy that comes right, here is leaving, here. doing this retrieving great. All dogs that come here, they do, everybody's learning a set thing, and then each dog I think of individually. Now he's doing paper here. So some dogs learn some different things. We're getting a refusal, and the reason why we're getting a refusal is it's wet. He made the mistake. He put it put it in the plastic receptacle. Not a problem. Good boy. Good boy. All this stuff is wet. So he's been doing he's been doing look at the body language on the dog. Good here. He's doing great. If he would make a mistake, that would be okay. It's okay if he makes a mistake. This is a dog. It's okay if the dog makes a mistake and it and it's uh, he's had two years training, but we want to make sure he's compliant. The, the 
Envelopes oh, and everything being boy. wet, yeah. I am causing a problem. Fair. I know I'm causing a problem, so there's probably going to be a mistake. Go put it in but there. to get the dog to a higher level, yes, we want to do that. And Good see, boy, that was success. Dog, this was this was great. He did a great job, and he's Good real job, proud of dude. himself. Sit. It's awesome. What a good job, Barry. He made one mistake. He's not a robot. The paper was wet. It confused him. It, the paper was outside last night. Confused him, so he put one time he made a mistake. He's just learned this. He's doing great. Good job, buddy. It's awesome. I moved the weave poles. They used to be by the barn. And I moved them here because Bear's mom's coming into town. And I want to start moving stuff around, making it more difficult for Bear. When an owner comes in town, we're usually doing them at a, at a hotel. Or if they live close, we'll do it at, at their house. If it's somebody that's in... Uh, New York City, we go to their house. I don't want the dog doing the lessons here because the dog is accustomed to doing them on my property. I want to make it more difficult for the dog. That way we can get that out of the way so when the dog gets gets home, or it is home, that's all worked out. So he comes trotting right over and he goes right through this like no problem. Very good. Real good. Nice job. Do it backwards. Come here, buddy. Here. No, we're yeah. gonna try it. We're gonna have him go it the opposite yeah. way, and that makes it totally different. You you first train him to go yeah. one way and get him going Here. good that way, and then you try it the opposite way. They will have weave. problems. Here. That's weave. just how it Here. is. Take your time. Weave. Be thorough. The important thing about the weave pulse is that I'm not teaching the dog to do this for dexterity or um, agility. It's not really about that. That, that. that term agility isn't really what it's about. What it's about is the dog being compliant and following direction. And a dog that doesn't know the weave pulse that you haven't taught this to, you point to this and try and get them to do it. They're not going to do it. It's all about following direction. This is something that if you have a yard and your dog's trained to do this, you can go out and, and use discipline. And each time you have the dog go through the weave pulse, you're getting success. This is a positive thing for the dog. And it's a positive thing for you because your dog's gonna listen to you better. That's what the weave pulls are about. I teach the weave pulls to a dog so that the dog starts understanding that they need to listen to me. It has nothing to do with dexterity. It has nothing, nothing to do with any of that. Even if, if I taught the dog to do a whole agility course, it's all about the dog being compliant and following direction. That's what the weave pulls are about in a nutshell.